We've gathered here to worship. God has drawn us together. He may have drawn you here because he has a message that's just for you that will change your life. He may have drawn you here because he wants to use you to touch somebody else's life today. Whatever the reason, we are here in God's house. He is here. We have his full attention. Let us worship together and let us stand and greet one another in the name of Christ. Join me now in the call to worship. You are the bread of life. Are souls, you are the living water. Are you are the great I am. The hymn is number 34, Word of God Across the Ages. Would you join me as we pray together the prayer of invocation printed in the bulletin? Let us pray. We need all that you are, O God. Be present with us in our need. We need to share all that you are with others, O God. Help us to be your living presence in our world. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to invite the children to come down for children's time. All right.
this morning, we are going to talk about being servants and serving others. Now, what in the world does that mean? What does that mean, serving others? Does that mean like being a waiter in a restaurant and serving food? No. No. What do you think that means if you're serving others? You have a guess? You don't know? Do you have a guess? What do you think? You don't know? Serving others means just doing things for other people. Doing things that they need or doing things that are kind. So can you all think of some examples of how we can serve others? (laughs) Can you think of examples of how you can be kind to others? What do you think? Okay, if you see somebody hurt, you can help them. What do we think over here? Can you all think of anything? Um, If somebody's sad, you can, like, go go beside them and be their friend. If they're sad, you can go beside them and be their friend. What do you think? Do the laundry for them. You know, (laughs) that's serving your mom and your dad, right? That's a big deal. That's a big deal. That's a good one. Notice when I offer the microphone, they all want to start talking. Now, I'm going to show you guys some things that are kind of symbols of ways that people are served, okay? So tell me if you know what these things are. If I can get them out. (laughs) Give me them. All right. What is this? Those roller things that you paint with. It's a paint roller. Well, how in the world could I serve someone with a paint roller? Paint their house for them. Paint their house for them. Yeah, if you notice their house needs painting or they need help, maybe they can't do it themselves. Yeah, will you hold that for me? You're in charge of that now. You're our paint roller, okay? Now, what, you better know what this one is. What is this? Does anyone know what this is called? What's it called? A heart It's called a microscope. You're close. It has the word scope in it. It's called a stethoscope. What is it used for? It's, u- it's used for, it, doctors use it to um, listen to people's hearts to see if they're well. Yeah. <laughs> doctors listen to people's hearts to see if they're well, absolutely. And that's how they serve people, right? They help make people better, maybe in their community, or maybe they can go in other communities where there are lots of sick people. Can you wear this around your neck, please? Hold it for me. Hold that for me. Keep it safe. All right, what about this one? What is this? A hat. It is not a fireman's hat. What is it? What? It's a construction hat. You had your hand raised. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. yeah, what's a construction worker do? What do they do? You don't know? What do they do? They build stuff. They build stuff. You're right. That is the best way to say it. You want to wear this for me? So they can help maybe build a house for someone or even just fix, maybe someone's stairs are messed up. They can fix things. Okay, these are all big ways that we serve other people. These are things that people notice and see. Did, you're right, it is a hard hat, but it's not very hard. Did you know that Jesus calls us to serve people in little ways too and in ways that people might not notice? Can you think of something? Just small you could do. You said doing the laundry. Other people wouldn't notice that, would they? Your parents would, but these people wouldn't notice that. What's something else? Something even as small as offering somebody a drink of water when they're thirsty. Will you hold that for me? Thank you. You don't have to drink it right now. (laughs) Something even as small as that. So our job as followers of Jesus is to look for ways that we can serve others every day, big and small. Okay? Can you guys repeat after me in prayer? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. And we thank you for loving us and caring for us. Help us to find ways to care and serve others. We love you and we thank you for loving us, even though we make mistakes. In your name, amen. All right, let's head on over to Children's Church. The Old Testament reading today 
is taken from Exodus 16, verses 2 through 4 and 9 through 15. There too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There, we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread that we wanted. But now you have brought us to this wilderness to starve us all to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day, the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for the day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. Then Moses said to Aaron, Announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out toward the wilderness. There they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites' complaints. Now tell them, in the evening you will have meat to eat, and in the morning you will have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am God. That evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost covered the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, it is the food the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
Thank you, choir, for leading us so beautifully in worship this morning. Today, as we pray, we want to remember the beautiful life of Bob Whelan, that is the rose on the altar this morning, and we also want to remember Louise Dodd, who has taken a fall and is recovering at Park West Hospital after a fall. So pray for Louise this morning, and we will especially remember the Whelan family this morning as they mourn the loss of Bob. Join me now as we pray together. Gracious God and loving Father, how grateful we are to find ourselves in your presence this day. How thankful we are for a world in which your provision makes it possible for us to live well. How grateful we are for the beauty of the earth, for the joy of the day, for a beautiful place in which to live and to make a difference in the world. But we recognize today, Father, that there are those among us who struggle this day for one reason or the other. And we pray that your grace and your mercy, your comfort and your strength might be with them in their time of struggle. We pray today, Father, for the Whelan family. We ask that you grant them grace and comfort as they mourn the loss of Bob. We give you thanks for his beautiful life and for the ways in which it graced your world and made your world a better place. We pray today, Father, for Louise and Allison. We pray for Harriet and Wayne. We pray for Mitch and for Alice. We ask that you grant each of these what they need in their time of need. We pray today, Father, that as we live and move and have our being in your world, you might help us each day to see your vision for the world. And you might help us to look to your strength to realize that vision in the world. You might, in fact, O oh Lord, give us willing hearts with which to serve our world in ways that you intend for your work to be done. These things we pray in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May God bless the gifts that you've brought to give this day.
And now receive our gifts, O God, and cover them with your goodness, that they might do good work in the world. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. The hymn is number 69, Children of the Heavenly Father. today, taken from the New Living Translation, is John 6, verses 24 through 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of God can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. And Jesus told them, this is the only work that God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. And they answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna when they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. And Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of the Lord. As a child, I loved those connect-the-dot puzzles. Remember them? Some of you would remember them. Remember that it was either letters or numbers, and if you connected the dots just so, then eventually what was a mystery before you was clearly revealed. I suspect that that is part of what draws me to the Gospel of John as my favorite gospel of the four in the New Testament. Because John is one of those connect the dots sort of gospels. Gone from John's gospel is any sign of the messianic secret that was a part of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, messianic secret is a big word that scholars use that 
talk about all the times that when people would get very close to who Jesus was and would say to him, you are the Messiah, he would always say, you're right, but don't you dare tell anybody. That is nowhere to be found in the Gospel of John. In fact, the Gospel of John is that connecting gospel that connects Jesus to the Old Testament, the scripture of the people who were his first followers. And it makes a connection between Jesus and the anticipated Messiah. And it makes a connection between Jesus and God very clearly. In fact, at one point, Jesus said, the one who has seen me has seen the Father, for I and the Father are one. And it makes a connection between Jesus and human beings. The Gospel of John is very clear about who Jesus is and Most of it is centered in seven very explicit statements that are found throughout the Gospel of John. They're called the I am statements because they begin with that description of God that God gave to Moses as Moses was about to go and visit with Pharaoh. Remember, Moses asked, who shall I say sent me? And God said, tell them that I am sent you. So these seven statements all begin with Jesus claiming to be that I am. And the descriptions that follow I am are all in one way or the other rooted in the history of the people who were Jesus' first followers. As you heard read, in John 6, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In other words, I am one of those essential elements to survival. In John 8, Jesus will say, I am the light of the world. I am the means that you have of overcoming darkness. In John 10, two statements, Jesus will first say, I am the gate for the sheepfold. Remember? reminding people that he is their source of protection from harm. And just a couple of verses later, he will say, I am the good shepherd. I am the one who provides guidance for your living. In John 11, around the resurrection of Lazarus, Jesus will say, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the power over death, even in the face of death. In John 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The essential things that we all search for in order to survive. The essence of what life requires. And in John 15, Jesus will say, I am the true vine. I am the one who provides nourishment from and attachment to God your creator. So you can see from those seven statements that for the Gospel of John, Jesus is clearly identified with the person of God. Jesus is clearly identified as the source that his followers need for everything that they would ever need in life. Their challenge was to believe that the provision of Jesus was sufficient. And that remains our challenge as well. Like those early followers, we sometimes struggle with the idea that Jesus is enough. Like those early followers, we sometimes can't imagine that just having Jesus will meet the needs that our life requires. But like those early followers, we need to hear Jesus say not once, not twice, but seven times, I am all that your life requires. I am all that you will ever need. I am sufficient for the journey and the requirements of life. But you know, it's it's kind of interesting that Jesus made that sort of claim and, and put himself out there, but those of us who have read all four Gospels remember that his professional career only lasted some three to three and a half years, not very long by most comparisons, and suddenly he is gone. And what to do with that? 
Well, I think here's what we do with that. When Jesus made those I am statements to his initial followers, and as we hear those statements ourselves, they're not just statements about who he is, they're mission statements about what we also must be for others in the journey of life. We are called to be bread to those who need bread for survival. We are called to be light for those who are seeking to overcome darkness. We are called to be the gate for the vulnerable that need to be protected from harm. We are called to be the good shepherd for all of those who are seeking guidance for life. We are called to be the resurrection and the life in the midst of death, overcoming the power of death, we are, in fact, called to be the way, the truth, and the life for all of those who are seeking what is essential for survival. And we are called to be the true vine, connecting people to nourishment and attachment to God, their creator. Jesus didn't intend to do all of those things himself. Jesus intended that we also would engage in those things as his followers, and we would become those things to each other. That is the essence of Christian community that he intended. And that raises then the real question for our mission, the real challenge for where we go in life. And the question to me seems to be at least twofold. The first question probably is, which of these things do you need someone to be for you today? Are you one who needs bread and light and protection and guidance and power over death? What is it that you need someone to be for you today? The second question, I think, is sort of like it, but it turns the coin the other way and asks, which of these things do you need to be for someone today? Do you know someone hungry who's craving bread? Do you know someone in darkness who needs light? Do you know someone who's vulnerable that needs to be protected? Do you know someone who needs nourishment and attachment to God? Do you have any idea the power that you have to provide those things for them? And then I think perhaps the further question is this. Are we willing to connect the dots for others, to help them in their time of need? And are we willing to allow others to connect the dots for us so that our needs can be met in our time of need, knowing that somehow in the doing of both of those things, we all will receive from God in Christ everything that life requires for living well. My prayer, my hope, my aim in helping to lead you is that you will find a way to embrace both and to be the church that God has called us to be. Amen. As we come to the table of the Lord, we sing together hymn number 461, Let Us Break Bread Together. Would you please stand as we sing together?
please stand and join together as we pray our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Lord, make me, even me, an instrument of your peace. Amen. And now as you go into the world, go into the world and help others connect the dots in their places of need. Go into the world and allow others to help you connect the dots in your places of need. And know that somehow between the two of you, you will both receive what life requires for living well. Go in goodness, go in grace, go in peace. Amen. Thank you.